The topic of this video is ocular histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis is a fungus. This fungus is prevalent in river valleys such as along the Mississippi River Valley, the Tennessee River Valley, and other such river valleys in temperate regions that are common in the United States. In particular, uh, lots of people on the East Coast have been exposed to this fungus and a certain percentage of people, probably based on genetic factors, respond to exposure to the fungus in a peculiar way. They develop scars in the lungs and they also develop scars in the retina. The retina is the lining of the back of the eye and after exposure to this fungus, perhaps due to an uh, autoimmune reaction, certain scars develop in the back of the eye that are uh, typical for this condition so that when an ophthalmologist looks into the eye and sees this pattern of scars as little spots and also around the optic nerve that connects to the eye of the brain, he can infer that the patient has been exposed to this fungus in the past and is a responder uh, to the fungus in this peculiar way. What's important is that at a later point blood vessels from a deeper layer called the choroid can grow up into these scars get under the retina and leak and bleed and this can take away reading vision. Patients frequently respond well to injections of medications into the eye that cause these blood vessels to uh, diminish and quit leaking and the way these uh, injections are given is to prepare the eye with numbing medicine, drops, q-tips of numbing medicine and gel and then sterilize the eye with betadine and a fine needle about as thick as a hair is injected through the sclera, the white part of the eye, and the medicine is delivered into this gel and it diffuses back to the back of the eye where it has its effect. Patients typically require frequent injections initially, but they often can be reduced to a lower level and sometimes can be weaned completely over time. A patient with these blood vessels in one eye has some risk of developing the same problem in the fellow eye and patients need to be monitored at regular intervals. After seeing this video, if you have further questions about the ocular histoplasmosis syndrome, I would refer you to the information document that is found at the homepage of this website.